So on this part, uh, I'm going to, as I mentioned in the first one, just make a slightly more complicated uh, plant. And just a few things to note before we start. So this is another Megascans Atlas um, that I'll be using for this. And um, I kind of touched on it briefly in the first video, but I just wanted to sort of uh, make sure um, that I got the point across properly. Um, for this Atlas um, texture and workflow, you know, um, the idea is obviously to save on texture space, as is always important in games. Um, so in the first part, um, you know, I only used up a small section of the UVs and a small section here. Um, but you'd want to obviously utilize that. So in Atlas, you usually, um, it's usually going to be using several different assets in the scene, um, completely uh, separate static meshes that have nothing to do with each other but um, are all sharing the same texture space this atlas so for instance uh, the plant here that i'm going to make now i'm going to use um you know put some of the uvs on this one and put some of the uvs on this one um, and these are all quite spaced out quite far from the nature of the way the atlas being put together but um you know if, if i was going to do this for real I, I would um you know bring all these in closer um, this is a, a 4k texture as it is so I could either bring them in closer make it a 2k um, or just uh, add in some extra bits and bobs to, to fill up the space um, but as I said about se separate objects um, you know you could also um, make say um, just a flat plane and sp uh, scatter some of these leaves around um, and then you could drop that into your object or into your scene and set dressing into your level um, you know so it just look like fallen leaves on the ground or at the base of the plants or whatever so yeah just um, wanted to make sure that I uh, got that point across about utilizing um, space on your atlas not just having a 2 or a 4k texture in your level when only a small section of it being used up um, try to pack as much in as you can and also, as I mentioned in the first video, um, when creating your Unreal materials, um, you can uh, use parameters um, on your texture samples. So basically, in your texture instance, then you can just uh, you'll have your material built, your foliage material built, and then it's just a matter of uh, dropping in new textures. So you don't have to keep rebuilding the material. So say if it was it wasn't a it was quite a simple material in the first part but if it was much more complicated and you didn't want to have to build out that uh, uh, graph tree every time you could just parametrize <laughs> um, all your texture samples and then just swap them out in the instance so I just wanted um, to mention that before we uh, get going right for this one here I'm going to um, I'm gonna make uh, like it's gonna have branches modeled uh, geometry kind of branches um, so I'm just gonna start with a cylinder five height segments and three sides is enough here it might seem a bit crazy but you know it's it's actually enough here for this type of asset um, anymore and, and you'll sort of exponentially raise the, the triangle count or the vert on card vert count same with the height segments, it's, it's up to you how many you want to have, how many you can get away with. So five in this case, because we're going to be bending these branches. So our Unreal Man is here again, just for scale. And, oh, that's, um, we won't comment on that. So I'll just hide him. So I'm just going to time lapse voice narrate this part, because it's, um, it's a bit redundant, it's just basic modeling. Um, a lot of the more theory stuff um, or explanations I suppose are covered in the first part and um, I didn't want to bog this video down so I'm just adding a taper modifier there you know, to this uh, twiggy bit just to make it a bit more natural looking and I'm uh, going to add a taper or sorry an edit poly modifier and select all the center polys and then control I to invert the selection and that will uh, select the caps at the top and bottom and then just delete them because they're, um, they're no longer needed and also it makes it easier to unwrap cylindrical shapes so just going to add a UVW unwrap and you can see from those green lines there's existing seams from the primitive UVs so um, I usually just uh, by habit add a UVW map and clear to get rid of all that and then add an unwrap on top of that and that just gives me a, a blank slate to start from uh, 
clears off the UV so just select that uh, choose the seam select the edge edge loop then just right click and the UV editor break it uh, peel it relax it and pack it just to get it down into position and now I'm just um, applying that same material so we're making use of the atlas here for the twig part um, and this um, there's not going to be any detail on this uh, part of the UV so um, I'm just um, packing it in anywhere to get some texture on it so I originally put it there but then I'm going to move it because you can see there it gets clipped by the opacity map so I just move it up scale it down and put it into place there just to cover it with texture and not to worry too much about the textile density because um, there wouldn't really be any detail anyway on that uh, sort of a part because it's, um, it's going to be quite translucent as well so now I'm just going to um, clone it out here shift dragging it to clone it out So I'm just starting to create the um the, the pl plane here for the leaves, and this one here doesn't have to be uh, far far as in the first video. I'm just going to make it two two. Uh, you can make it whatever you like for reasons discussed in that first video. Um, it's going to obviously affect the uh, on card vert count. So just enough uh, segments here to give it a little bit of shape, but also keep the the count down. And there's many different ways to um, to attach these leaves onto the branches. You could use pat to form, and you could use the placement tool in Max. You could use a brush and with a, um, multi mesh brushes. You could use a particle system, um, or you can just shift, clone, and place as I'm going to do here. Uh, there's many different ways to do it. So just set it up again here with the UVs. Apply that material, and then just put it into place. And as I said earlier. To, to with the variation thing I keep going on about and the fact that we're using an atlas I'm only going to use one leaf for the for the example here in the tutorial but you could use uh, multiple leaves you could even chop these up and make your own atlases um, depending on the assets you're making um, it's quite flexible sort of way of doing things and um, so the UVs are lined up there and I'm just as I say going to use this one example and when they uh, clone them the UVs are all going to be stacked in the same spot in the atlas so just a bit more tweaking and collapse that and start to position it then just rotate it into place and I'm just uh, putting the pivot exactly where it needs to be which is important for setting these up because you can uh, rotate and scale right from the pivot when you're setting this up I'm just uh, ensuring that's kind of intersecting the the stem is intersecting the, the larger uh, branchy part and just a bit more tweaking and now I'm just going to adjust uh, some of the verts uh, making sure to uh, check preserve UVs so you don't disturb the existing UVs and I'm just going to shape it down a bit more and bring the verts in closer to the edge it can help with them um, for these kind of opacity mapped objects in Unreal um, you can get dithering transparency dithering so um, it just helps a bit to uh, shape them a bit more closely to resemble um, the texture below So now I'm just going to go about um, positioning them. And as I said earlier, there's uh, many ways to do this. Um, but this this is kind of straightforward. You can still get some variation, you know, by scaling them and rotating them. 
and then once you have one branch set up then um, with leaves on it you can just um, sort of a modular approach to building um, you're, build, you're attaching smaller modules together to make larger ones and then making larger ones again um, so it's always good to uh, you know building that in the 3d reuse things where you can and also plan out in advance uh, the way you're going to build something just makes the process uh, a lot more efficient less painful so even if you, you stare at a reference image for whatever an hour or so or however long it takes um, and actually visualize how you're going to build something while you're looking at the picture it's just something that I've kind of done um, depending on what I'm building I find it helps to sort of break down the modeling process in your head um, while you're looking at various different parts of the reference image so I'm just pressing X there it's a shortcut to search uh, by filter and Max quite handy and now I'm just setting up the vertex paint to go over this in detail in the first part basically uh, vertex colouring um, is used to control um, the wind in either speed tree or unreal the way I've set up the material in unreal uh, you can see that in the first part as well so basically anything that's black won't be affected any verts that are colored black won't be affected and um, in this case I'm using the green channel in unreal so I'm just going to use a green paint and then just uh, kind of blend out a bit of a gradient from black to green and that's that's all there is to that really so I just collapse down the um, the vertex paint modifier and you can just uh, go to object properties and uncheck vertex channel display to return to um, your texture if you don't like looking at the vertex paint on top of your texture so I'm just going to uh, mirror these across and the newer versions of Max they have that geometry option so it doesn't flip the normals and just position them and now it's just a matter of um, I'm collapsing all the time here you could be using edit polys or um, using your stack more efficiently depends on what you like to model but so fast to do that I generally collapse the stack and I'm happy with where I am rather than keeping everything in place so just tweaking and messing about getting that variety that I keep on talking about um, to achieve more believability but these assets you know you, you can whack these out uh, pretty fast and once you get the, the basic workflow down um, whatever you can be doing uh, shrubs grass um, whatever kind of plants um, piles of leaves and then obviously trees but it's um, there's many different ways to do it um, but yeah, once you get the, the basics down then you can expand the workflow or find something else that works better for you um, so I'm just adding the band modifier I've attached everything into one object and I'm just adding the band modifier with, um, limiting the effect of it and then also bringing the gizmo down so the bottom doesn't bend, it stays in place where it's attached into the what would be the ground so depending on how many segments you have there um, you're going to get different results on the bend so five was actually enough for this so I'm just um, going to attach these all together now in um, a single object not sure what happened there it seems to be not attached just uh, just in the pivot but then I realized that they, they weren't attached so I'm not sure what happened there so I'll just uh, reattach them together and the pivot now is back in position where you want it to be and always making sure to reset X form when you're attaching rotating scaling 
and we also explained that more in detail in the first video so now it's just a matter of um, you know cloning rotating scaling and because the pivot is um, positioned right at the bottom there it's, it makes it easy to scale and rotate and that's the reason for that and also the uh, the branch going up straight through the, the center that was just put in place to um to cover up any gaps that might be there and then you can just chop it off and that's pretty much it and uh, here's the, the, the finished plant you know i'd spend a lot more time on this um if we we're going to make use it as a finished asset and i'll probably um do it again properly like a lot of things i don't like the way these stick out at the end and are essentially the same so i change around the uvs a bit and just as i say very vary it up so that's it pretty much and then here it is in uh, ue and all i did it's exactly the same material as from the last video just uh, swapped out the textures so atlas and like this as well um from the last and you know with these two plants uh, two different types of plants but they're using exactly the same material because they're using the same texture so that's and bent one of the benefits of atlason so that is our plant and i might do another video then with grass or maybe i might show speed tree in another one so we'll see what happens all right then hope this was useful cheers thanks good luck